Hi guys, just a quick video tutorial I've thrown together for you, showing a simple way that I use 3D Coat to post process models that I've created in Rhino. In particular, I want to focus on how I can use 3D Coat to fill small gaps or apertures that sometimes can be left by intersecting components and geometry. Here we have a bezel clustering created in Rhino and kindly supplied in STL format by Sahar. As we can see, there are a few narrow openings between some of the collets, which it would be wise to fill in order to minimise our chances of getting investment inclusions and maximising our chances of getting a nice clean cast. I'll put a brief explanation of what can happen if we don't fill these holes in the description of the video, as well as all relevant links. Okay, so now I'm going to take us through a fairly basic, but nonetheless common workflow that I use to post process a file like this through 3D Coat. So to begin with the software open, I'm going to go to File, Import, and import mesh for voxelization. Find our STL file, which is here. Press open. This brings up the toolbar options box, and we need to make sure that everything is unticked except for respect negative volumes and leave rotated axes. So everything else unticked apart from those two. The next thing we want to do is scale the model so it has an estimated poly count of around about 2 million. Now, the estimated poly count is dependent upon the amount of details in the model. Now, this is quite a clean design. There's not a massive amount of uh, detail, nor uh, is there anything particularly like relief detail. Um, so, 2 million is plenty. So, um, to get the process started, I'm going to use the auto scale button to bring us up from 2,878 to brings us to 173,000. Um, and then what I usually do is rather than trying to work out the exact percentage increase I need, um, I just keep increasing in increments of 50%. So I click scale here and type in 150. So 150 is 50%. Um, let's press OK. Brings me up to 389,000. So let's try that again. 875,000. One more time. Oh, 1.97 million. So that's that's within the range. I'm happy with that. So I can press apply at the top of the tool options box. And this box pops up, which asks me if I want to keep or preserve the original scale of the model, which obviously we do because eventually we'll be re exporting this and presumably 3D printing to cast. So I'm definitely going to click yes because I want it to stay the exact same scale as the original imported file. Great, so now that's been done, I can click Fill on the left here, and I think we'll choose one of the shaders from the right, probably the red wax. I quite like this one. Great, so now we're at a place to start uh, filling um, and refining this model. The first thing to tackle is to fill these three holes that we identified earlier on this side of the ring. So we can see one here and one here. So I usually start from the inside of the shank. We've probably got a better idea from here, actually. And you can see that with the fill brush selected, I've got this big circle. Now that's too big for what we need. The area of effect uh, is defined by the yellow circle is too large. So I'm going to use the square brackets on my keyboard to bring this down. So I probably want something about there. And then it's just simply a matter of clicking and holding and filling material between. So click and hold here. I can even refine the areas between these collets. And you can see how quickly it's smoothing the material around, but not removing it. That's very important. We don't want to remove material. We only want to add into the low areas. So that's already filled those holes immediately. I might decide to continue a bit more and do the intersection of the shank to the collets here. And that's like in the top of those holes. They could probably do with a little bit adding in there. So rather than clicking and dragging, I'm just going to single click like this, just to build it up slightly. So I'm being quite delicate with it there. And same in here. Two. And I think that should just about do it. Um, I might decide actually to add a little bit more material in here, just to increase the strength between this part and this part. So again, I'm just gonna click and blend in material and up to there. And actually, as we're at it, let's do the rest of the model. So. Click and drag here to add a meniscus in here. Just single clicks in this recess here. Click and drag here. And let's just keep going around 
use this quite quickly. Now moving the camera around just takes a bit a uh, bit of practice. Once you've done it a bit, it's quite intuitive, as actually is applying the material. So this obviously isn't as precise as using the Rhino, but it's a really good complement to Rhino. As trying to sort of fill material like this would be next to impossible. Okay, so I think I'm happy with that. Oh, a little bit more here. I'll just take this over here. And there we go. So as a last little touch, we can just generally smooth the whole model. So I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see that better. Going out to here. So I'm on the left, going down right to the bottom of all the tools. And there's one at the bottom called Smooth All. I'm going to click that a few times. And you can see how it's having a gradual smoothing effect over the whole model. This is just to tidy things up that last little bit. So I'm happy with that. I think that looks a bit better than before. And most importantly, we have filled all of those small apertures, which could lead to these uh, investment inclusion issues. So now that's finished, the last stage is to export the model back into an SDL. So to do that, we go to File, Export, Objects, Change Save as Type to STL. Um, and then I want to save a copy of this rather than overwriting the original file. So I'm just going to click on this one and just add an underscore 3DC to the end, just for my reference. So I know that this is the edited file. Now we definitely do want to reduce the, uh, the mesh by simplifying it, because if we export it as it is, the file will be huge, somewhere in the region of 80 megabytes. Because of all the uh, extra polygons added in the smoothing process. So I'm going to click yes. And then I want to reduce the poly count down to arrive at around about 500,000. So you can see the last time I did this, I did that. So it's already there. So if it wasn't, say if it was back up here, um, just drag the reduction percentage arrow down or up, depending upon which way you need to go until in this instance, for this sort of model, we want about half a million, 500,000. We go, press OK. So that's converted that into a new STL for us. Okay, so let's re-import that mesh back into Rhino and compare it to the original one until we can see what's changed. We need to file import, find our edited STL file. The settings as they are. Okay, so you can see that uh, we've not changed the size of the model at all. It's been re-imported back into the exactly the same scale as the first model. So that's what we want, of course. We don't want to change the size. Now, if we can compare them, you can see that these holes, which we had here, actually may be easy to see this on Arctic. There we go. Which we had here, which could have caused uh, issues with investment inclusions. They're now obviously gone. And we've got a nice, smooth uh, meniscus and transition between all of the collets as a whole. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, guys. Thank you very much for spending the time to watch and listen. I hope you got something out of it. Any questions, do put them in the comments below the video, and I'll try my best to answer them. And uh, see you next time.